if the Mongolian horse riders once made the eastern grasslands unable to grow. Then 300 years before that, the Vikings also caused waves in the western seas. These are brief summaries of the dominance of the Viking people one of the most ferocious tribes, but also the greatest warriors. Their appearance opened up an era in the history of Northern Europe that lasted nearly three centuries from 793 to 1066. In fact, the term, Viking, does not refer to all the peoples of Northern Europe. The term Viking appeared in the 6th or 7th century in an old English poem, meaning seafaring people, pirates, and traders. At that time, Europeans began to recognize the people of Scandinavia as excellent seafarers and fighters on the sea. Originating from the Scandinavian peninsula, which now includes Norway, Sweden, Denmark, and Finland, the Vikings were originally just farmers, but they later used their strength to travel across a vast region from east to west, and then appeared throughout Europe, creating a glorious Viking era. As mentioned, the Vikings originally only knew how to farm and cultivate in Scandinavia, but an event in 750 AD changed the history of this tribe. In a vast region with more than 30 small and large kingdoms, endless wars for power occurred. Amidst the difficult wars, a disaster occurred. A large dust cloud spread in the atmosphere due to the collision of comets, combined with volcanic eruptions that covered the sun. It caused a sharp drop in summer temperatures in the northern hemisphere, and cold and darkness enveloped the entire Scandinavian region. This great disaster was depicted in the beliefs of the Vikings, often known as Ragnarok. Ragnarok's apocalypse appeared when the sun turned black, meaning the moment when a huge dust cloud covered a large area of the earth. Later, as the dust cloud gradually dissipated, the last summer finally returned, and the society of Scandinavia changed into a new, more brutal form. Perhaps because they had experienced extreme hardship, the people of this region began to become warriors who invaded abandoned territories. England was one of the first countries that the Vikings attacked, because there were many monasteries here that contained many treasures. In addition, King Otha was the first king of England at that time to mint silver coins, which was one of the most valuable items according to the Vikings. Finally, the invasion of the Lindisfarne Island became a stepping stone for the Vikings to start attacking and occupying England. By 870, the Vikings had taken over the Northumbria, Mercia, and East Anglia regions. Only one land, the Wessex Kingdom of King Alfred, remained independent. Finally, Emperor Alfred pushed back the Viking invasion, leading to a peace agreement, with each side keeping half the territory. England was the premise for the Vikings to attack and occupy most of the neighboring territories. They invaded and plundered monasteries on the west coast of Iceland and established their permanent base here. In the Mediterranean, they attacked many lands of the Netherlands, Germany, and even directly to the capital of Paris. In 885, a Viking leader named Siegfried demanded that King Charles of France pay tribute but was refused. Siegfried led 700 ships and more than 30,000 people to follow the Seine River to besiege Paris for 11 months. The Viking Empire also extended to Russia, Ukraine and fought in many other countries in North Africa, the Middle East, and Jerusalem. In their era, they dominated and devastated a very large area of land in Europe and neighboring regions. In order to venture into uncharted territories and plunder their spoils of war, the Vikings needed better weapons and qualities than ordinary people. Their first weapon was their ships, which took them all over the world. With the emergence of sail technology in the 7th century, the Vikings created long ships made from oak wood. According to National Geographic, these ships were designed with compartments containing large rocks. Placed on both sides of the boat to maintain balance in rough seas, combined with weapon compartments on both sides. One of the newest types of warships that the Vikings used was over 10 meters long with a tall and sturdy sail to withstand the impact of waves. The upper part of the hull was very close to the water, allowing these ships to sail faster on the surface of the waves. This also allowed their ships to move through shallow waters and penetrate deeper into enemy territory. With 200 warships, they could transport 5,000 troops a day for 150 nautical miles, 
which is about 280 miles. Therefore, the enemy often could not concentrate their forces to defend and deal with the Viking army. This was too favorable for the Vikings to expand their empire throughout Europe, as the old continent was covered with many coastal countries. Thus, the Vikings sailed to conquer land, plunder, and bring back spoils of war. Whenever they found rich or cultivable land, they established new empires there. You think Christopher Columbus discovered America? But research indicates something else when the Vikings explored this land 475 years earlier than the famous explorer. The warship was a tool to bring the ambition of the Vikings throughout Europe. And to conquer all, this tribe needed the skills and bravery of the greatest warriors. Both men and women of the Vikings learned martial arts from a young age, and their favorite fighting style was called, Glima. From the age of six or seven, children here were taught Glima martial arts, which helped the Vikings always have a strong warrior team during their heyday. This martial art was very focused on strength, reflexes, and especially decisiveness. Not only for fighting and training, but Glima also helped the Vikings increase their ability to cope with harsh weather conditions. They considered fighting to be their pride and raison d'etre. And they valued fighting to the death to be able to be reborn in the holy land of Valhalla with good wine, beautiful women, and supreme glory. Their faith created determination on the battlefield and they never backed down from any enemy. The Vikings were so enthusiastic about fighting that they created wars among their own tribes. When there were no foreign enemies, they killed each other to fight for territory, wealth, or sometimes just wounded pride. They had the ability to assimilate into culture no less than the Chinese or Mongols. To this day, many ancient words in English still have their roots in the Scandinavian language. In 1066, the glorious Viking era came to an end. A Norwegian army led by King Harald Hardrada invaded England with a fleet of up to 300 warships. The decisive battle at Stamford Bridge, commanded by King Harald, swept the Norwegian army out of northern England. Afterwards, both sides signed a treaty allowing the Norwegians to withdraw, but permanently banning them from invading England. This marked the end of the Viking era. And in the following years, the Vikings began to disappear from Greenland, the land that produced great Viking warriors. For a long time, no one could explain why the Vikings disappeared in the 14th century. Until it was discovered that they had to endure the effects of climate change. Research by American scientists suggests that the increasingly cold climate may have been the cause of the Viking community's demise in the 14th and 15th centuries. From around 1100, the temperature dropped by 4 degrees Celsius, resulting in shorter summers and colder winters, which reduced the Vikings' ability to farm and raise livestock. The increasing appearance of ice made their raiding activities less frequent, and their trading activities slowed down, leading to famine and decline. This could be the most widely accepted explanation for the disappearance of the Vikings. However, could a strong and brave people like them easily perish for such reasons? Why didn't they migrate south to avoid the cold, which remains a mystery? Or perhaps the Viking era had come to an end when other countries learned to resist them, making it difficult for them to migrate. Nevertheless, the appearance of the Vikings remains a notable milestone in human history. Their warlike nature makes me wonder, if the Vikings had appeared at the same time as the Mongols, and the two strongest armies in the world clashed, which side would win? <laughs>